Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Lindsay Hamill and I'm the Associate Director of Education and Public Programs at UCR Arts. And um, today we are here with Lynn Marsh and Kimberly Meyer um, to talk about um, our, an exhibition we have on view at the Culver Center called Who Raised It Up So Many Times. But before we get started, uh, we at UCR Arts would like to respectfully acknowledge and recognize our responsibility to the original and current caretakers of this land, water, and air, the Kawiya, Gabrielino, Tongva, Luceno, and Serrano peoples, and all of their ancestors and descendants, past, present, and future. Today, this meeting places home to many indigenous peoples from all over the world, including UCR faculty, students, and staff, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to live and work on these homelands. So um, we, as I mentioned, we currently have this wonderful exhibition on view at the Culver Center. Um, it's called Who Raised It Up So Many Times? And it's a selection of artworks exploring labor and production in the realms of television, cinema, and 3D capture, featuring sites of cultural production um, in, um, such as German um, TV news station, the Berlin Philharmonic Concert Hall, an English opera house, and a Southern California mixed reality capture studio. Installations reveal the orchestrated yet invisible labor that underpins cultural production. So um, the artist is uh, Lynn Marsh, and she's a Canadian artist who's currently living and working in Los Angeles. Um, we're lucky to have her as an associate professor in the art department here at UC Riverside, and her work is held in public collections, including the National Gallery of Canada, Agnes Etherington Art Center, and Queen's University, among others. Kimberly Meyer is the curator of this exhibition. She's a cultural producer, curator, and designer working in art and architecture. She was the director of the Max Center for Art and Architecture at the Schindler House Los Angeles for 14 years and at the University Art Museum at California State University in Long Beach for two years. She served as faculty at Columbia University Graduate School for Architecture Planning and Preservation and at the Roski School of Art and Design at University of Southern California. Um, so Kimberly and Lynn, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I just, a note for our audience, um, we'll have time at the end for questions, so feel free to put those in the box at any point during the conversation, and we'll get those in the last 15 minutes of the program. And I'll now um, hand it over to you, um, to you both to discuss. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. What we thought we would do um, to begin with is a kind of um, run through or exhibition tour uh, because some of you may have seen the exhibition, some um, may not have seen the exhibition. And uh, it's, a, it's an exhibition of um, three video installations and a feature film that's presented in the um, cinema of the Culver Center. So we'll, Show you some. Uh, we'll show you some installation shots and then some some video clips, uh, so you'll have a sense of the work. Um, and these will be sort of short clips. Uh, I'll just briefly maybe set up each piece, um, and um, and then we'll have time to sort of flush out ideas and discussion uh, after afterwards. So. Um, well, Kimberly, do you want to start with saying something just generally about the um, selection of works and? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, thanks, Lindsay, by the way, for um, getting this together today and um, and and so on. I yeah, the 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 this show um, really looks at how Lynn Marsh uses apparatus as a way to think about the visual world and um, and work and and human work and like human humanity and technology and thinking about this kind of like through line or this continuum where these things all sit together. So the 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 idea about apparatus um, and of course apparatus can be a government, it can be um, a human worker, it can be technology, it can be um, a national, you know, like an electric grid. I mean, there's all kinds of things that that actually have to come together to make a cer certain kinds of things work in, a, in our world. And Lynn is interested in sort of like the cultural aspect, like from a cultural point of view, what is that stuff? And, and actually how does it affect the way that we 
sort of think through our world, um, you know, especially visually. And so we looked at, in this particular show, it's really looking at specifically apparatus in relationship to people working and cultural workers and people who make things happen, like the people that made things happen at this museum show. And, and, and sort of what is, what, what, what are those things that we don't normally don't see? We see as finished product, but we don't necessarily understand what that is, is part of and like, and how all of that is connected to kind of the larger um, global structure. And so, and so in this, in this show, we're really looking at specifically cultural work um, and cultural workers and what their relationship is in relation to technology. Um, and so some of these pieces are really from, um, they're, they're earlier, but they'll all have that, like a very strong sense of like looking at apparatus and figuring out what we can learn from that. And then it comes into the present day work, which she did um, since she's been here in California, because these other works are very much located um, in like the UK and Europe where, where Lynn was working previously. So now she comes to California and it's kind of like, okay, so what are we thinking about here in relationship to workers and apparatus and cultural production and images and technology and, and, and all these things? Like, what can, we, what can we start to try to figure out here? And that's the last work that's in the show. So we're gonna, Lynn's gonna take you through it. It's gonna be sort of chronological. And it's also, if you go to the show, it's kind of how you can, you know, sort of traverse the show spatially. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll land on the newer work and its various components because it has more than one. Um, and then we'll sort of talk about it. So that's, the, that's the, the overlay of this talk, but also the overlay of how we thought about the exhibition. Yeah, thanks, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the first piece we're gonna look at is uh, Camera Opera. It was made in 2008. And um, this was, um, during a time where I was living in Berlin, or, or how the work began was I was invited to do a spot for television for uh, um, the uh, Montreal, uh, Montreal Biannual. And it was a one minute uh, uh, insert that would go during the kind of commercials on television. So this is a, a work that was really making uh, made to, to be thought about as, as television. And for the work I was thinking, well, what is the space of television and how can I play and intervene in that space of television? So um, I uh, gained access to a studio NTV um, uh, at a station RTL, which is a little bit like a kind of CNN. Um, it's a, a, a 24 hour news and they have these little shows within them. And, and I was able to go into that studio um, and I was working with the, um, camera operator, like I, I was working with everyone who was working in that studio. Um, you'll see a clip in a second. This is a two channel work. Um, we had five cameras in the studio surrounding an anchor woman. And I, because it was a kind of um, time sensitive intervention, I was given access to the studio with the technicians, with the personnel for um, a kind of evening after work, six o'clock to 11 o'clock. So I came in with uh, a set of drawings, which I called, a, which were a, a choreography, a, a choreography of the, for the camera operators to follow. Um, I had direction for the camera woman, which was to sort of, I gave her a text, but I said, I will cue you when it's time to read the text. And, and, and in the piece, I, I in fact never, cue her. <laughs> um, and um, and uh, there's uh, Strauss music playing, um, which was playing in the studio really to uh, guide the movement of the camera operators. So uh, Lindsay, if we could go to, we have a three minute clip of um, camera opera. <laughs>
the two videos that you were the two screens were, that were that were corresponding with the two videos that you saw here. Um, Lindsay's going to we we mentioned this the the video is always a tricky one to show sometimes on the on these platforms. So um, if Lindsay might uh, also send put a um, Vimeo link in the chat. That's what I often do when I'm teaching online. If people want to watch the video on their own um, in real time, there's a little bit of a lag I'm noticing. So um, you can uh, click on that video and watch it on Vimeo as well. So we'll um, go to the next work now, which is called um, the Philharmonie Project Bruckner um, Symphony Number no. Five movement, Movements One and Four. And this piece was uh, made in 2011, also in um, made in Berlin when I was living in Berlin. And um, it was really the um, one of the camera operators actually from Camera Opera. When I showed the um, camera operators the, fin the final or finished work, said to me, oh, you've got to come to the Philharmonie and, 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 and see this camera system that they have there. And so um, in the um, Philharmonie, they have six. So this is the Philharmonic Concert Hall in Berlin. They have six automa um, automated cameras and they film and broadcast live the um, concerts, the, the symphonies that are performed. So um, the um, what, when I went to sort of check out, see how they were working, look at these um, cameras, rather than doing an intervention with the cameras, I was just kind of stunned by um, the work that was being done by the people who were broadcasting um, the, uh, the concert. Um, there was a kind of uh, virtuosity in their work and their understanding of music and um, and how they were kind of working together almost as a as a unit to um, to uh, mediate this performance. So this became the subject of this work. I put my cameras on this team. Um, it's a it's a single channel work that has four camera. Um, continuous camera shots in the in in on the on the in the frame. Um, the the image that you're looking at now, the two top figures are two kind of key people in the team. One is the, um, the it, it's a nice coincidence that they're both wearing checkered, <laughs> but the um, the the man with the glasses is the. Um, kind of like you'll see, he's sort of like the um, conductor of the team. He is calling the shots and, and, and saying when, um, when an image should go live. So which camera should go live when, and he's, um, those are his hands at the bottom. He's looking at the score of the music. Um, and the team has already kind of come up with a choreography of camera movements to um, in order to you know they know where everybody sits in the orchestra they understand the music they know okay this is the harp playing now or this is the violin we need camera four on the harp we need camera six on the violin etc cetera, etc cetera. so they kind of come up they map out the, the concert through the sheet music and then they perform that live the other man on the other side with the scarf um, is um, the actual camera operator and he's got a console so these are remote control cameras and he's working um, with these six cameras and trying to line them up so that the um, the person you know with the vision mixer hits the button and that image goes live um, this will make more sense I think when you see when you see the video so um, maybe we'll show the video now it's, it's the eins auf 19, 19, ja, 19. 1 auf 19 ja 1 19 ja das ist auch schön 15, 4, 13, 4, 11, 4, 11, schön, 4, 2, 4, 3, 2, 17, 17, guckst du 4, 1, 30, 1, 30, ich zoom out, angetickt, oh, das ist falsch, das erste ist, ja, genau, 4, A, speichert, 4, 5, anticken für zoom in, 5, die 5. 
Achtung, gleich 2, 2, Uhr. gleich. Und folgt ein Zoom in der 4. Die 6, 2, 2. 2, 2. Und die 4 nehmen. 4. Wir zoomen auf den Dirigenten. Noch 10 Sekunden. Die gehen aber ran. Gleich mit einem ganz. Ja, gut, alles auf gut. Die Dauert noch ein bisschen. Da. 39. 8. 4, 22. 4, 22. 9. Achtung, folgt ein Zoom auf in der Kamera 1. Jetzt direkt los. 12 Sekunden. Eins, vier. Eins, vier. Anticken für Zoom Out. Anticken. Wir müssen mal Stück für Stück machen. Zwölf. Zwei, sechzehn. Zwei, sechzehn. Folgt ein Zoom Out in der Kamera eins. Bis in den Circle. Zehn Sekunden Zeit vom Dirigenten. Dreizehn. Wo mit Einsatz? Ja. Ich schon. Ja. Ja. Jetzt wird es gleich ein bisschen schnell. 14. 45. 45. 3, 1. 15. Anticken. 3, 1. Angetickt. 16. 4, 15. 4, 15. 17. 15. 15. Achtung, folgt ein Zoom in eine Kamera. 18. 3, nicht sofort. Sehr schön. Ist auf Tür. Und jetzt Zoom. Gegebenenfalls die 6 insertieren, wenn wir, wenn wir hier ja. sterben. Ne? Ja. Ich noch dichter ins Orchester. Und jetzt die 6 rein damit. Sehr schön. Super. 1, 20. Super. Sehr schön. 1, 20. Traumhaft. 2, 13. 2, 13. Und wir sind auf der 19. Stellung mit 3, 1. 3, 1. 3, 1. Oh, jetzt sind wir sehr weit. 4, 4 30. 30. 5,37. 537. 5 steht noch? Da. Jetzt. 5,37. Achso, okay, die waren. Ach, ganz schön. Alles klar. Alles gut. Alles gebaut. 21. Korrigiert die 5? 22. 4,25. Da, ne? 4,25. Gleich nochmal. 23. 24. 1,15. Anticken für Sie. 1,15. Angetickt. Check, check, Bitte. Check, check, check. 25. 2, 2. 2, 2. Achtung, folgt dann Zoom in, in der Kamera 1. 26. Auf Instrument? Ja, ja auf Instrument. Und los. Sehr schön. Sehr schön. Sehr schön. Sehr schön. Sehr schön. Und die 27. Ja, 1, 32. 1, 32. Ja. Geht. Ja. Ja. Bisschen aufziehen, wie das Ja, danke. Und. 28, 2, 16, 2, 16, 5, 37, 5, 37, geht schon? 2, 16, 1, 16, 16, The cameramen dancing with their cameras, the sort of the, the, the interface with the apparatus. Um, and, and here it was really this idea of an inverted performance, the performance of these um, um, of the of the of the um, technicians. It really, I really saw this as a kind of theater um, in itself. The next work is a feature film um, called Tragedy. Um, and in this work, I um, was, this work was made in the UK in Leeds, um, up north with Opera North. And it's a work that um, is filmed and um, in real time to um, the performance La Taviata. And what I did here was again, a kind of in residence with while this production was going on. Um, and I was behind, that, that had, I was really fortunate, it had two runs. And in the first run, I um, was really an observer. I was watching the activity backstage. I was watching the activity in, activity in the wings. 
and while and taking lots of notes and and looking for um, um, all of the kind of um, sort of events that were happening just on the edges of the stage. Um, I then mapped out again a kind of choreography for myself of where these things were happening at what time in the music. And then on the second run, I went back and I filmed during uh, three performances. In some cases, I just installed cameras on rigging so that I knew, okay, that in this place, something will happen in act two and that camera can just be there other times. And, and I also had a kind of, um, I worked with um, Margaret Salmon, who is a camera operator here, who, um, who I kind of, because it was such a tight space, I kind of guided her around and I had my watch and I knew where to be at what point in the music. And, and from those three um, recordings, I put together chronologically in time with the music of the performance, a sort of, again, a kind of counter narrative, a narrative or a, or a not, not really a narrative, but um, again, looking at the um, culture of backstage in relation to the music. And here I was really interested, as in with the, with, um, the Bruckner piece, how, um, how the music again kind of informed the um, and 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 gave drama to the events. So we can um, look at the. This is this is the opening, close to the opening scene here. And um, one other thing I'll say is that La Traviata has a has a main you know female lead in it. And and here the female lead of this work is the stage manager who sort of sits in her little corner with a tiny little light on her. And she um, cues every event in the show. She cues when the curtains go up, when the lights go on, when the actors come on stage. And so she becomes the main character in this work. Um, okay, thanks, Lindsay, you can play it now. Key Suite 27. Thank you, stomach please, thank you too. Thank you, stand by please, AVQ7 and monitors on. Thank you. LX key three. Go. Fly key two, go. LX key four and AV key seven, go. <laughs>
Okay. Um, so that's playing um, on Saturdays and Thursdays um, at noon. And if you go to the show and it's not playing, there's a QR code so you can, um, you know, get access to it and, and watch it at home. Now um, we come to the new work. Haha, <laughs> so much to say here. Of quite, a, quite a more complex work for me um, and one of my more ambitious to date, actually. Um, we'll start off this time just showing, I'll show you a, a clip um, and um, talk about some of the elements and then maybe we can get more conversational and, and, and break out um, you know, the, the making of and, 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 and more of what's going on here. But um, the title of the work is uh, Nympha Atlas. Um, and let's start, actually, let's start with just looking at the work and then I'll, I'll, I'll show you the other elements and that'll give a little more context. Okay, so we'll go to some installation shots and I'll give you a little bit more of a sense of um, what you're looking at here. Um, like Kimberly was saying in the introduction, you know, I, I um, was living in London and Berlin and, and making work uh, in Europe for a number of years. And the work is, is always um, somehow site responsive to, to, um, to or, Many of my works are site responsive to a kind of um, event, uh, a spectacle, or or or, or a um, political or social situation, or history to a site, etc. And when I came to, yeah, it was the that was the question for me. What am I What am I going to do when I, I moved to um, Southern California in 2017 and and to, to take up a post here at UCR and. 
um, it, it really, yeah, well, what was it that I wanted to engage with? And um, rather than picking a, a very particular site, I was really thinking of Southern California as this site of special effect and this site of kind of the entertainment industry and new technologies and, and particularly new technologies in terms of um, imaging. And um, so I was um, on the one hand looking for something that, um, um, you know, that, that kind of expressed that. Um, and at the same time, I was also, I'm also interested in a kind of, in these kinds of historical references. So Nympha Atlas really started, um, maybe we can, uh, I'm gonna hold up um, a document. Um, this is, when you come into the space, you can pick up one of these documents. And it started with um, Warburg, um, who did um, a project called the Memozine Atlas. And, and Abby Warburg was a, um, an art historian um, and um, working in Germany in um, sort of uh, up to 1920s um, and when he, he, when he died. And he was building an image archive. Um, and maybe we could, um, Lindsay, just fast forward a, a few slides to, um, to one of the pages, so here. So, and uh, actually go to the next slide. This might be a little bit easier. So he, this is a panel from the Memozine Atlas. Abby Warburg was looking at um, these um, um, arc, uh, um, images from Western, called in Western culture from antiquity onwards and talking, uh, really interested in these reoccurring motifs, um, gesture, and it wasn't about how things repeat in the culture, but how they kind of reemerge, reoccur, and are um, cited or recontextualized in the moment. Um, and that was something that I was really interested in. So maybe we can go back to the slide with the green screen or with the green here. So, so I went through the archive and I was picking out these um, um, gestures and bodies that I built into a score. Um, if we come back to the um, slides. So what we're looking at here are um, large television screens on these uh, plinth wheelie um, carts that, I, that we had that the um, preparators, Cody actually made these. And um, the, 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 um, score, these images were given to the dancers who were um, responding to them to in these short performances. Um, and we then worked in a studio. So this is going to be a little bit schizophrenic. Let's hop forward to the um, shots um, of the, yes. So <laughs> here we go. So um, we worked in a studio, which is, it's a volumetric video capture studio. And we captured these performances with um, 106 cameras. So on these pillars where we see the light boxes, there are little cameras and sensors. And it's a circular screen screen stage. Um, and what happens is that these uh, figures are perform an, an action and that action is captured by 106 video feeds that then get stitched together and form what's called a 3D asset. This 3D asset then comes into a, I bring this 3D asset into a game engine and um, I can then with virtual cameras refilm this object. Um, and then maybe we'll click back yeah, so here's a couple of the shots where you can sort of see the studio and me working with the performers. Um, so let's go back yet yeah, to another. So in, and and um, in the backgrounds, what you were seeing. So so what we're seeing is actually these these three these virtual cameras filming these figures, 
And you also, maybe not in this one, let's try another slide. Oh, here you see. So I've, I've brought in the um, elements, the architecture. So in the back of this figure here, you can see, um, uh, this is Abriel, and you can see the post and the, um, the cameras and sensors. So I'm bringing the architectural elements and technical or apparatus from the studio back into this kind of virtual um, um, stage that I'm refilming the figures on. And what we're looking at when we, when we look straight ahead here is the third element. So you have the, um, the score, which is the, the, the image, images of the, from the archive, you have the videos, and then you have this wallpaper. Um, and the wallpaper um, are images that are the flattened out, the atlas, they're also called atlases, and they're the 2D flattened out um, maps of these figures. Um, and maybe we can again hop forward to um, some examples. Here, here we go. So these are the tiles. These are what um, the files actually look like when I get them from the studio after we filmed. And they're pieces of the body. They almost, they, for me, they look quite sort of violent in the way that they're torn apart. Um, and these pieces, um, when they come into the game engine, they get they they get mapped onto a geometry that creates a form, and so the wallpaper for me was again this way of pointing to the kind of construction or the apparatus of, of the building of the building of the body um, or an in between body from the real into the into the the, the three D representation. Um, could we? Yeah, maybe we could now go back to um, the early installation shots. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll, I think I've tried to lay out everything, maybe a little bit schizophrenic, but I hope it gives you a sense and then maybe we could sort of maybe talk a little bit more informally, Kimberly. Yeah, I just wanted to ask one thing because there are, are there also these um, I'm curious because earlier before we all got on the zoom you had showed these. Um, there were actually videos of those oh, like yes. things that you actually get like yes. after, yeah, yeah. Could you show those again actually. So yeah so if we if um, Lindsay if we go to that last video file. So what we're looking at here is an mp4 file, this is what I take into unity the game engine and it is what gets mapped over the um, geometry and we end up seeing the whole the, the full body of Abriel, but this is what the actual file looks like. Yeah, thanks. I think it, it was it's sort of fun to see that because tonight was actually the first time I had seen that particular like version of the asset. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, eventually it's, it's interesting to, to think about all these things. And I appreciate the fact that you're actually leading us through some of the technical parts of this, um, because somehow to me, um, wh whereas I don't necessarily need to see all the behind the scenes if i'm looking at like a film or something or like a sculpture like i don't like that that doesn't have to do with translation in this way that doesn't have to do with a kind of a mediated translation like with this work i think that it's really important to see everything like to understand these parts because i think that where you're operating is in this space where there's a kind of a digital realm and there's a lot of computation there's a lot of algorithm there's a lot of figuring things out based on a certain idea about like how to make the world look realistic or how to feel realistic and um and 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 most of us have actually zero access like there's zero literacy on like what that like what's actually happening and when you when you talk to people who are thinking a lot about like data and data in relationship to um you know to marketing data in relationship to politics in relationship to you know um law enforcement 
a lot of what, what gets talked about is that data itself and how that's written, that there is no such thing as a neutral as a neutral way to process data. So I think what's 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 really interesting about this last, especially this last work that you're that you're talking about is that we receive sort of like data that's actually been organized for us to have a specific experience and to have a specific cultural um, you know, response. Um, but we actually, most of us don't have any idea what that really is. And so when you start to pick it apart, like you are, like just to understand that there actually are all these kinds of decisions that are being made within the, the you know, the computer program that um, that ends up making things look like they do. Of course, there's all, this is also, of course, an artwork. And so we're able, not only we're able to see that, but there's a certain critical light on it because you're specifically doing certain things with it. Um, but I think that one of the things that this this work cracks open for me is that sort of um, like thinking about like the history of imagery, the history of how we how we take in imagery culturally as language, and then how does that how does that like yeah um, how does that play itself out when there is all this uh, infrastructure behind it that you actually really have no, like you have even less access to than we've ever had access to before. Um, so I don't know. So so thank you for showing that last little part. And I guess that's one of the things that we could start to talk about a little bit, like um, because the earlier work is very analog in certain ways. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's certainly it's like a, it's a different version of technology. Opera is a certain tech version of technology um, like putting on a show has a certain version of technology that's, that I would think of as more analog. And the new work is really confronting the fact that we live in a world that's gone very, very digital, that there's all kinds of stuff coming in. And that Los Angeles specifically is a place that, that actually makes that stuff happen. So how do you see this work in relationship to older work? Or how do you see, I guess, that kind of like that arc of technology in relationship to like what we what gets fed to us and how we you know then what what we do with that yeah i mean i think that the, the new work is definitely a jump I, I think the older work relied on the lens as the mediator so it was it was i think all of these works are are about this kind of a kind of mediation and and in some way pointing directly to the mediation so you know why? Why do we see what we see? How we see it, um, and how do we control what we see? So, for example, if we, if I was thinking about camera opera, one of the things I called it camera opera because I was thinking about how the news, the the, the kind of fictional, or the kind of dramatization of the news, and thinking about using the camera movement as a as a sort of analogy to this kind of drama. Um, I was thinking about those um, moments in um, in newscasting when 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 the, they start the show and there's like the big crane coming swooping in and the doom 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 and the you know and this this idea of like this that that sort of manipulation or that framing so and 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 camera opera was was so was being playful and pointing to that um, and. And I think in 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 Bruckner as well, it was it, the there's this the the team is mediating this performance, but there's it's it's also through the lens. The new work, like you say, it's 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 also direct. It's really interested in that mediation, but it's not it's not a mediation necessarily through the lens as directly. So it's it's and I'm still thinking about this new work. So it's it's harder to talk about because it's more because it is more complex in its process. But um, you know these um, these new technologies are uh, defining aesthetic regimes, how we think and see figures and. This volumetric capture, for example, is in its really, really early stages. It's 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 not a um, and when when you see the videos up close, you can see where the image is falling apart and where the edges are. And because, um, for example, the um, the three hundred the, the the 106 cameras still can't like get in between these fingers. Um, so your fingers are can be distorted or, or, or underneath you know, the camera can't get underneath. So it's, it's not a complete 
picture sometimes, um, the picture falls apart. And so um, that was really interesting to me that it's, but it, it, but it, is, it is setting up a very particular aesthetic, which is close to the avatar. Um, and it, it's um, that I was really, I was interested in that kind of, I, I think it's important that artists kind of get in there and, and, and do something uh, with these aesthetics and do something that's maybe um, uh, more questioning of, of these regimes of aesthetics that are, that are, that are, that are kind of coming out, these sort of like, like, I don't know, like filters almost that become um, normalized as, as the way we see the world. Mm -hmm. or, um, and so, so it's playing with that and it's trying to kind of pull that apart a bit. Um, but I'm also interested in this idea that the um, that these regimes of <laughs> aesthetics and these these uh, images uh, don't come from they they come from somewhere, and so like reaching really far back for me was was part you know an interest and in part of the project. I really saw this as how can I extend Warburg's project into the contemporary moment. Um, Warburg was also very interested in technology. His um, Memosine Atlas is made up of uh, photographs and photographs in, you know, the early, the, the late 1800s and early 1920s was a mediated technology also. So it's photographs of artworks. I mean, sometimes there's uh, newspaper clippings, there's sometimes um, postcards, but they're, they're, they're not, they're not originals. Um, and, and they're also set up um, in these kind of collaged ways where it's um, different time periods pushed up against each other. Um, and so uh, that kind of technological lens um, is, 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 already, is already here in, this, in, in his project, which is something that I want to extend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I keep, because I was, I mean, I know we have, she, we should go to Q&A really, it's like it's already, the time flies when you're talking about Lynn Marsh's artwork. Oh my God. Um, so I know that we have to quick, that we actually, we have to shortly go to, to the Q&A, but one of the things that, um, that I kept thinking about, like looking, I mean, it was, it's fun to be away from the show and then go back and look at, think about the work again, after having like installed the show. And, and one of the things that I think is really, interesting that's like a kind of persistent through all of them has to do with a certain a certain kind of a waiting or of a kind of a kind of an a pres absent presence how there's always there's something which is um always not there but like is actually really driving the thing and is almost sort of central but but is but you actually can't see it you know that's actually kind of driving the thing and so that's just one of the things that i think um I mean, again, I should, we should go to Q and A, but, but like, how do you think about, how do you think about the relationship between presence and absence in your work? Hmm. Yes, I, that, um, there's always this, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that kind of threshold of, um, I think it, there's the, there's the anticipation in the work. Um, um, the, the presence and the absence. It's uh, maybe it's also for me a way of thinking about um, amplifying the absent. Like, or so. How can I give an example of what I'm thinking about? So in in. Um, um, the Brook in the Philharmonie project, the, 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 the performers, the, the musicians are absent. The, mu the music is there, but the music musicians are absent. Um, and so it, the, the music functions in a different way. It amplifies the um, performance of the bodies of the um, you know, um, technicians that are working. Um, in yeah, I'm I'm kind of stumbling. I'm, I'm stumbling with this. Right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I 
think it's functioning. Yeah, it's 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 functioning differently in in all of them. But I think there's I think it's a it's a it's a form of intensifying or amplifying. So either um, mm. the condition of its absence amplifies something else that's happening, or amplifies the 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 event itself, or inverts the event, or or allows you to kind of see the event. You know, um, like in the um, uh, tragedy, the light from the stage really animates the figures as if they're in a performance. I couldn't have, you know, I couldn't have lit it better than that. And so that, um, again, there's, there's, there's some, that threshold, that tension of something that you can't see is there in, in the work, and yet it, it animates the thing that you do see. So the absence yeah. of the thing animates the thing that you do see. Exactly. Right? Yes. I, I think that, yeah, no, and I think that's really fascinating. And I think it's also interesting to see it in the new work with it's a, it's almost like Warburg was also he's also animated it, it's somehow like what he's referring to as these kind of historical popular, you know, images and that and that and that your and that this work is somehow Warburg is in there but you can't see it. Like it's somehow I feel like tracks um, in each of these works, but in, in a really interesting way. In the, in the last one, I also keep thinking about like zeros and ones, like presence and absence. Like a, a one is something that's there, a zero is something that's not there. So how does that actually like kind of like factor into it? It's, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and, and there's the abstraction is really in this. Yes. Even, even though it's very figurative, there, the, like you say, this kind of the, the, the um, algorithms and, and the processing is, is, is a form of a kind of contemporary abstraction. Right, right. Yeah. Um, okay, should we go to, should we go to Q&A now? Yes, sure. Okay, so we have one um, that asks uh, you about the processes and decisions on picking the garments that the dancers wear. Ah, okay. Well, I um, I worked. I I started kind of working from their wardrobe a little bit. So we we worked remotely for a long time, and then I rented a studio because it was during the pandemic. And then I rented a studio, and we could kind of come in there. And and I I asked them to bring a load of things that they had already. So that was part of it. Um, and um, and then we. I, and, and then added things. So, but what I did, you know, I, I wanted to have these sort of, um, in a way, bold, uh, present um, colors and, um, and shapes. So that was part of what I was looking for. Ryan, um, I think Kimberly will remember, we, uh, when we were doing, Kimberly was with me when we were doing Zoom um, um, uh, auditions and Ryan wore that um, yellow toga and it was just like fantastic with those, with some bright socks. Um, and so that, I, that just stuck in my head the whole time. I was like, oh, Ryan's got to wear that. So uh, it was a combination, a few things that I, added and, and, and bought to kind of complement what was coming from these, from their um, wardrobe already, yeah. But it was really about shape and um, color and form. Yeah, and also something that you felt like they would wear. That's why you wanted them to, like, it's like not something that would not look like a, not feel like a costume, but just something which they would feel yeah, they would be actually be out on the street and poten potentially. Remember we talked about that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have another question. If we have time, um, da, da, da. Lynn, have you created work based on archival research before? Can you speak about this process? Is it something that you would do again? Yes. Yeah, so I did a piece. Um, if you go to my website um, afterwards, called "Taking Positions." Um, and I um, was invited to work in um, a, the, a, the former studio of a Nazi sculptor, Anna Brecker, who, um, and the studio was being decommissioned and it was being refurbished and turned, becoming a um, museum for post-war German art. And the, um, 
new director invited me during the moment of refurbishing before it was open to do a kind of sighted work there. And I was working with a series of female performers who were um, sort of em embodying or, or taking on the postures of a series of Brecker um, sculptures. And I was really interested in this idea of <clears throat> can a sculpture hold an ideology? So I am interested, and I also worked in the Olympic Stadium, which was, of course, um, in, in the, the Berlin Olympic Stadium and working with kind of Lenny Riefenstahl as, as, a, as a sort of historical reference. And, and so I'm, I'm interested in this um, idea of repurposing and recontextualizing certain kinds of images so that um, thinking about, um, you know, can this idea that, uh, that the, um, that we're, we, in a sense, there's this under, an understanding of history, but understanding that history can be, um, well, not history itself being repurposed, but these gestures and these forms can be rethought in a contemporary moment and they don't have to pin us down to something that it's not about something being fixed, that there is this kind of possibility, that there is this kind of way in which we can um, um, move forward with um, from, from a historical perspective. So we don't sort of say, okay, everything gets thrown away, but it's like, how can we own, re-own, rethink um, our, our representations, our, um, our worlds, our ways of being? I guess, I mean, if anyone wants to pipe up, but I don't think, I don't see any more questions here. I don't know, Lindsay, do you have a better view on all of this than I do? <laughs> sure, um, let me check. I think that you've addressed everything. Um, yeah, I think we've covered all the questions. Thank you so much um, to both of you for being here today and for um, walking us through this exhibition. I hope that everyone will come see it in person at the museum. Um, we're open on Thursdays and Fridays from noon to five and on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays from noon to five. Um, so please come see it in person. Um, and again, just thank you so much for being here. And we'll have this recording up on our YouTube as well. So you can go back and watch it or, or share with your friends. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you.